This is the ST360 wipe test counting system. Um, it features a well detector and it is ideal for nuclear medicine applications. Um, it features the ST360 radiation counter. It's a digital rate meter with alarm um, for contamination survey work and it displays uh, counts, counts per second, counts per minute and we have the extra large LED display that is clear and visible. The well detector is a sodium iodide detector, uh, 1.75 inches by 2 inch crystal. The well is 0 0.7 inches in diameter and 1.5 inches deep. It includes the stand um, and the shield right here and the cable which is in the back. Also with the system is included um, a cesium-137 tube source. It's a check source uh, to help us um, see if the system is working properly. Um, this system can be run in standalone mode without a computer. Um, it can also be run in software mode which interfaces with a uh, PC or a Mac. Um, when in software mode the data can be stored in uh, spreadsheet compatible files allowing uh, data analysis and graphical presentation. Now to assemble the unit uh, gently mount the detector into the stand uh, line up the prongs with the holes inside of the stand and very gently ease it in and even more gently lower the shield onto the detector. Uh, the detector is very fragile. Here is the rear of the ST360. You can see the power jack, the on off switch, the RS232 ports for both PC and Mac, but um, mostly we use USB these days. This is a USB, and we have um, connections, uh, cable connections for scintillation and GM probes. Um, today we'll be uh, using a scintillation probe. We'll connect the cable to that port and make sure the switch is switched to that setting. And very important, make sure that the unit is powered off and unplugged while connecting or disconnecting the detector cable. Failure to do so could result in a dangerous shock from a power surge. Now, first, we will demo the unit in standalone mode. And we will uh, have a look at the controls. It's uh, almost self explanatory. Um, the count button. It uh, starts the counts, it starts the timer in the event of data acquisition. The stop button stops the timer and counting. Reset resets the counts uh, to zero. Um, and the display select control uh, toggles the different modes. And we have um, counts mode, time, rate, high voltage, alarm point, and it's indicated by this uh, bar, uh, the red light. And then when there's no red light, that means you are in uh, speaker volume mode. I'm going back to counts mode. Now, the first mode we'll have a look at is high voltage because it has to be set at something. It, it's default zero and you can't um, measure anything at zero. Always make sure you match the voltage with the probe, the recommended voltage, because if you go too high, you can damage the probe. We'll increase this in 20 volt increments to 1000. That is the recommended voltage for this particular detector configuration. And we'll go back to counts. Now the count mode is for displaying the number of radio, radioactive events, uh, gross counts, uh, during data acquisition, the display will increment in real time. So we will just um, use this um, tube source and place it in the well just so we can get an idea of how the a basic idea of how the instrument works. And um, we will uh, press count. 
and that is gross counts. Um, it's, we'll go on indefinitely because there's no preset time right now. And on the left you see the bar graph here. And each red bar represents 200 CPS uh, counts per second. Now, if we toggle the mode to time, this is um, uh, the time that has elapsed, and it's, it's ongoing right now. And rate, that is um, in CPS, uh, counts per second, and it's hovering around uh, 1,500 uh, CPS. Now, if I press the up or the down button, I get CPM uh, counts uh, per minute. We'll go back to CPS, and we will... Uh, the alarm point, uh, you can set that at whatever you wish. At zero, it's, it's not activated, but... Um, and that's what it sounds like, but usually you would set it something much higher than that. So, going back up to counts, pressing stop, and reset to zero. And we'll have a look at the, um, the time uh, mode. Now, we press up or down, it goes uh, into preset. So, we can preset it at whatever we want say 10 seconds, but it would usually be more than that. Most, usually 60 seconds or more. And we will go back up to counts and it will count for 10 seconds and stop. Uh, pretty straightforward. Okay, press count again. It's zeros and counts Again, up to 10 seconds, or whatever, you preset it. Okay, and we'll try something else. Reset, press count. Okay, I press stop in the middle, and we can continue. And it will just uh, go through for the remaining time without losing any data. And that's that. I'll press reset. Now we will um, uh, show you how to uh, test a sample or a wipe or a test tube. First we will measure background and we want to go to time and we want to set this at 60, 600 seconds actually. Okay and we're going to take this tube source out and place it far away somewhere out of range. And we will go back to counts. And we are going to press count and leave it here for 600 seconds, 10 minutes basically. And we'll do that right now. Okay, we have skipped ahead because it has been 10 minutes. Um, this is the background. Uh, it is 5,597 counts in 600 seconds. So we divide that by 10 and we have 559.7 uh, CPM um, counts per minute. And we will subtract that value from any uh, sample uh, we measure. But now we are ready, now that we have the background, we are ready to um, show you how to take a measurement in the field. And we will, of course, use our um, tube source. Again, first we will zero, and we will go down to time, and we will set the time now at 60 seconds. We don't have to wait that period of time as before. And sending back to counts, and I'm going to place the tube source in the well. Now, if we had a, a wipe that you know, could cause contamination, we have a plastic insert we would place in there first. But this is a clean tube source, so that's not necessary. So now we will take the measurement and press count. And we will wait for 60 seconds. Okay, we have 
for this sample, uh, 91,884 uh, counts per minute. And we will subtract uh, the background from that. So, so the actual value is 91,324.3 counts per minute. And that was our demonstration. Um, the one mode I didn't go over was the volume mode, and I'll do that right now. So now we're in volume mode. We press up or down. You see the bars on the left side indicate speaker volume. And that's why I had it turned off because it's a little bit annoying. But that's how it works. And now we will check out the software mode. We um, have this connected a USB port to the computer, and this is what the software looks like, and we will start that demonstration now. To start the software mode, we of course need to install the software. That's very basic. Just download the setup file or retrieve the setup file from the disk. Uh, click onto the file and continue through the screens as prompted. When you open software, it defaults uh, in scalar mode. And um, the uh, menu is very basic and standard. You can save the data and print and copy various attributes of the data. And setup is fantastic because it's so much easier than in standalone mode. Um, you can even type in a description uh, for the experiment uh, to name the file. HV setting, we always want to make sure this is at zero when we... Um, connect and disconnect probes uh, for safety reasons. Um, also, we don't want to damage the probe. We know this to be set at 1000 as before. We set that as 1000 and you can see that in the right hand corner displayed. Uh, step voltage, we don't need this um, unless we're doing something like a plateau study and that's for advanced users. Um, Set volume, we did that before in standalone mode, and it's much easier here. As you can hear it, and we will shut that off. The serial communications and resync, that's used to uh, reconnect if we're um, using an RS-232 connection, but we are using a USB, and that's newer, and that doesn't re usually require such um, things. Um, you can view. You can view the digital rate meter analog. Uh, we have CPS, CPM. Um, and in the left hand corner, we can view scalar counts, digital count rate, or analog count rate. And we'll test that out right now. Um, the green button here, um, that's to start counts. And we will just count background. And you can see the elapsed time here on the right. Uh, there is no preset time, so this is continuous counts. Uh, digital rate meter. Okay, this um, 17 or 36 CPS. And change that to CPM. Digital rate meter. About 1200, 15, 17, 18. It's all over the place. That's CPM. And for those of you who still like analog, we have the analog rate meter. And that's overview. And we will now stop the counting. And we will, this is to erase a button to erase the data. Now, we want to preset the time, um, something short, like 10 seconds, just for display purposes so we get through this quickly. We're going to do uh, a number of runs. Um, that's uh, one of the features of the software. And we'll also have pause time between the runs so I can switch sources. So four seconds between the runs. So we now have... Uh, 10 seconds, preset time, and number of runs, 
four. Okay. Um, first run will be background. Okay. And in the pause, I place the source in the well. Okay, placing a different source in the well. Pause. Okay, placing a different source in the well during the pause. Okay. And placing for the oh that's the last run. Um, we can now generate a graph. Uh, constant voltage. You know we will use constant runs. Constant voltage. That's something for uh, uh, plateau studies. So here is our graph. I have a few points to uh, just to show you what the feature looks like. We can print this. We cannot save the graph though. Um, but what we can do is we can save this data um, as a, a TSV file um, and it can be later opened up um, by Microsoft Excel and you can graph it using that software which is very easy to uh, save. Um, we'll X this out. Um, again, some more Features to show you. Um, we counting now the instrument display. This controls uh, what's happening on the actual instrument. So uh, if I press this, you'll see counts on the instrument: time, rate, high voltage, alarm point, and so forth. Um, you cannot um, control the instrument. With the instrument controls at this time uh, in software mode um, it's fully controlled from the software from the computer but if you disconnect it then you get the control back um, so it will okay um, experiments plateau this is uh, for you know, we, we enter the high voltage range and its step voltage it, uh, increases incrementally uh, the time per step and this is for plateau studies and this is how we find out the operating voltage for the given probe if it's not already known, and that is for advanced users. Um, the half-life, I have number of runs, count time, high voltage, graph results. This is used for isotopes uh, with a sh uh, short half-life, and it, it documents and you know, studies the, um, the decay, and graphs it. Um, and that's that's about it for the software. Thank you for watching and please feel free to contact us if you have any questions or you need pricing. Have a good day.